This video is brought to you by Gemmer.com, a place where you can buy, sell, and trade collectibles of all kinds, uniquely for comic book fans and just lovers of pop culture in general. So go check it out, Gemmer.com, and hopefully we'll see you there. Hey guys, CJ here, and thanks for stopping by for another Hybrid News Now, where we bring you updates on everything going around the comic book world every weekday afternoon. And you know, a lot of our videos in the last month have been DC or Marvel-centric, so why don't we shake things up today? Let's do a Star Wars story first. Our top story today comes to us in the form of a new report from JoeBlow.com, as they've obtained exclusive information about this August's upcoming Rogue One film. And there is a lot of information in this scoop, so strap yourselves in and get ready. To start off, Joe Blow's sources confirmed to them that black-suited stormtroopers will appear in the film, in line with an image that Donnie Yen tweeted out in August. However, they also know that they're called Death Troopers, not Shadow Troopers, as they were referred to in the EU. Now, what role they're going to play remains to be seen, but if I could hazard a guess here, I'd say that they're probably going to be some kind of Nazi SS-like death squad sent to track down our main characters. While even in this report character details remain sparse, they do note that one character is named Cashin, and another is an Imperial droid who's been repurposed to serve the Rebels. The droid is apparently a scene stealer and doesn't really resemble any droids that we've seen before, with the site going on to speculate that that is the mocap character that Alan Tudyk is going to be playing in the film. However, even with all these awesome little bits, the biggest and best part of the report is yet to come. The site reports that Darth Vader will be making his first appearance in a film since 2005 in a much larger role than previously anticipated. Now the report ends there, but you gotta assume that Vader is going to be the primary antagonist, right? I mean, he's one of the most iconic film villains of all time, and just thinking about seeing him on screen again is giving me goosebumps. And on to our next story of the day, more details on Batman v Superman from that forthcoming issue of Empire Magazine. That issue is just the gift that keeps on giving, on top of villain confirmations, cool covers, great new stills from the movie, we also now have some new details on the film's leading lady, Wonder Woman. And that is definitely a good thing, because Godot's take on the superpowered demigod has been a pretty well kept secret, until now. As it turns out, Wonder Woman isn't a newcomer to the world of heroes. As it turns out, she's been around the block a few thousand times. Yes, Godot confirmed to Empire Magazine that Wonder Woman is more than 5,000 years old by the time that BVS begins, and has actually retired from heroics before being forced back into the fray. Now, why exactly she comes back remains to be seen, but it might tie into the theory that the Nightmare and its visions of parademons and dark side might have something to do with Diana. In that same issue, Snyder himself discussed how the smooth implementation of Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman sped up the DCEU's timetable, with Justice League coming so soon into their film universe. Let's take a look at his quote. It was incredibly organic how Wonder Woman came into the story. The whole concept came of, let's not save anything, let's try it all. Then Wonder Woman's entrance made us realize that we were much closer to the Justice League than we thought. We realized we were one movie away. Hopefully for some, quotes like this might lessen fears of DC cramming so much into the movie. And our third story of the day comes to us once again from the folks at Geek.com. And you know, as I joked about yesterday, their role of Marvel scoops just continues, but this time they've branched beyond Thor Ragnarok to address Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's been rumored for a while now that some new members might be joining the Guardians in the sequel, and Geek.com reports that not only is that the case, three new members will be joining the Interstellar team. The site is reporting that Star-Lord, Drax, Gamora, Rocket, and Groot will be joined by Yondu, newcomer Mantis, and none other than Gamora's estranged sister, Nebula. Now, Yondu's inclusion makes a lot of sense after how great he was in the first movie, and with Mantis's history with the Guardians from the comics and her skill set, her inclusion makes a lot of sense too. But you know, Nebula is a really interesting one here. She was one of their primary antagonists in the first movie, but whether she's a sleeper agent for Thanos or actually has a change of heart remains to be seen. But I'm expecting for sure that we'll get some kind of twist there. In any event, let me know your thoughts on this potential lineup in the comment section below. And in our last tidbit today, Jessica Jones' official Twitter account might have just revealed when we'll see Luke Cage's own original series later this year. Yesterday around noon, the account sent out this seemingly innocuous image of some normal-looking file folders. However, one of the folders had an interesting title on the tab, Cage-November. 
Now take this with a massive grain of salt, as this really doesn't confirm anything. However, it's worth remembering that Jessica Jones came out in November of 2015, so Luke Cage coming out a year later in November of 2016 is more than just a possibility. Personally, I think it's what everyone was expecting in the first place. So that wraps it up for another Hybrid News Now. Smash that freaking like, and if you want more news every weekday afternoon, don't forget to subscribe. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you tomorrow.